Hey guys, Steve here, and last time we completed a rerun of Pokemon Blue with Alakazam, and it reclaimed its number one spot. This run is going to be Electabuzz. That's right, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Pokemon. Electabuzz doesn't get to see a lot of play thanks to its low catch rate and being a red version exclusive, as well as being located in a difficult to find area known as the power plant. The rules are going to be the same as they always are. They will be located in the comment section of this video, or pause the screen if you'd like to see them. Every new video people give me helpful comments about type advantages and play mistakes I can improve on in the future. So keep up the good work and also try to find any of the three easter eggs I'm sticking in this video. I'm not telling you where they will be located or what they will be, only that they are going to be available on the screen for about 5 frames. Please comment where you think they are, and I'll let you know in the comments if you're right. I will feature the comments that find each easter egg first in the next video, and if it proves to be too easy, I'll reduce the time. I am writing the script after the run. Please try and guess in the comment section how quickly I'll be able to beat the game and how well you think it'll perform at certain points of the game. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on future videos. First off, we're going to start the game by grabbing our level 5 Electabuzz and replacing Squirtle with the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to make sure Champ has a Venusaur, which will resist our electric attacks. Unlike previous runs, I forget to give it a nickname when I started playing. However, if I were to give it one, I would give it Static. This is an homage to Static from the hit kids TV show, Static Shock. I set Game Hook to give myself perfect DVs before starting. I start off the first champ battle with a Leer to improve my damage for the rest of the battle. Bulbasaur can be quite trolly if it decides to spam too many growls, but then I just spam some quick attacks until the battle is won. Just like in the Beedrill run, I skip all the trainers up to Pewter, except for the level 9 Weedle guy. I do this to ensure that I am able to visit the Pokemon Center quickly to restore my PP. This is mostly beneficial to Pokemon that need to train before Brock. At level 11, I decide that I will take on the optional rival for a quick bit of experience. The battle goes just as you would expect a very powerful Pokemon that's slightly overleveled will go. Just a few quick attacks to take care of both of them. I attempt to plan out my experience so that when I'm done fighting the Lightyear's trainer in Brock's gym, we will level up to level 15. The plan is successful, we make our way to heal, and then waste off 22 of our Leers. I expect to run out of quick attacks on Onyx. The plan here is to use Leer every time he uses Bide, and then quick attack each time that he doesn't. I will eventually run out of Leers, and then have to struggle the victory. But that's just the plan. Let's face Brock and see how it'll actually go. The Geodude battle goes exactly as you'd expect a battle between a weak normal type against a rock type. By in part, thanks to three critical hits, we make our way to Onyx with 19 quick attacks remaining. This was a lot more than I planned for, but honestly, my HP is quite a bit lower than I expected. I start off Onyx with a Leer, and he gets the first Bide off. The Bide lasts for three turns, allowing me to get three more Leers off. A single quick attack does a decent amount of damage, but Onyx then gets another Bide off. This bide only lasts two turns, as if Onyx knew that was the exact amount I needed to get his defense as low as possible. A few quick attacks later and then Onyx hits us with another bide. With only two leers left, I really hope this one doesn't last me three turns, or the one attack could cause me to lose. Luckily for me, the bide only lasts two turns and I am free to continue attacking until I win or lose. The deciding moment is when Onyx then uses another bide and I must beat him before he beats me. I am able to claim the victory after just two quick attacks and I make my way past Brock on my very first try. Stay tuned for some clips at the end on just how I was able to discover that level 15 was the right level to go into Brock at. Unlike most runs, we have something extra to pick up in Mount Moon this time. Mega Punch. Mega Punch is a massive improvement over Quick Attack and makes the run significantly more consistent up until Body Slam. We make our way to the fossil room and I can hear the magical Helix fossil calling out to me. The call is an unusual one. Don't forget to subscribe and click that like button. It sounds like some sound logic. Anyways, we grab it and make our way to Cerulean. The decision to do the rival next is an easy one, because we don't learn an electric move until level 34. With our new Mega Punch in hand, the champ battle is a little less strategic. Spam Mega Punch and cross our fingers that his Pokemon cooperate. 
Pidgeotto is out first, and it uses two surprisingly strong quick attacks before succumbing to three mega punches. Abra is completely trivial, as Abra always is. Rattata is a bit sneaky and gets a rather weak quick attack off before also going down to a single mega punch. Bulbasaur comes out, and this should be a two hit KO, and with moves like Vine Whip and Tackle, we're really not in any sort of trouble. We crit our mega punch and don't have to worry about any of that. With 31 HP and nearly 45 PP of damaging moves, I think we'll make our way through Nugget Bridge and get to Bill's house with a little bit of PP to spare. After going through the minimum amount of Nugget Bridge trainers, I then arrive at Bill's house to receive the SSN ticket with only 4 quick attacks to spare. That was a close one, but the final time will absolutely be thankful for it. I decided that even though I don't have an electric move, it's worth a try at Misty now. So I make my way to the gym and just jump right into the deep end. Staryu then comes out, and thanks to an X defend, I go into Starmie with full HP. Up until this point, Mega Punch has been hitting at an unusually high percentage, and just like clockwork, our first Mega Punch decides to miss. However, Starmie's water attacks just aren't doing much against our high special stat Electabuzz. Just two Mega Punches does the trick, thanks a bit to a crit but it wasn't all that needed. We then patrol our way to Vermilion Mark to get our usual 4 Super Potions and 5 Repels. Now it's time to pick up the most important move of the run, Body Slam. Just like most Pokemon in the game, an 85 power, 30% chance of paralysis move is just one of the strongest and most consistent moves in the game. The normal moves stronger than Body Slam tend to all have drawbacks in some way. Just to name a few from Electabuzz's list here, Takedown does one fourth of the damage back to you, and it's inaccurate. Double Edge also does one fourth of the damage back to you. Skull Bash takes two turns. Hyper Beam also takes two turns, unless it leads to a knockout, but it also has the drawback of taking five minutes just to buy coins. Anyways, back to the game. We arrive, Champ 3 next. I was pretty confident going into this fight thanks to the XP from Nugget Bridge and our new move Body Slam. The Pidgeotto is able to get a critical hit Gust in, but as long as it's not a sand attack, I'm happy. Raticate is next and it manages to get a quick attack in before also going down to Body Slam. Kadabra doesn't get a chance to attack as it also goes down to Body Slam. Ivysaur does its very best and maybe if that Vine Whip would have been a crit, then we would have lost. But this battle was never really in question, except maybe a Gen 1 miss. We then make our way to Surge and stop the timer to do the trash can puzzle to make sure that the time stays consistent among my Pokemon runs. Surge is next and I'm pretty confident in this one seeing as we have a resistance to electric attacks as well as a very high special stat. Voltorb is out first and it's surprising that Voltorb survives our body slam and it uses its best attack it has in response before going down. With Pikachu, I'm pretty sure the crit didn't matter. It has a minuscule defense of 18. Now Raichu on the other hand, doesn't have Mega Kick in this version. It just won't be a challenge to our Electric Fiend. As expected, Surge wasn't much of a challenge, but the most difficult trainer in the entire game is coming up. If you watch a lot of challenge runs, you probably have heard of him, as he resides at the end of Rock Tunnel. Unlike my previous runs, I picked up a little trick to help me reduce my time in the form of the bike. Scott's Thoughts Porygon video led me to this revelation, and now is as good a time as any to get some practice in with the bike. Enough hype. Let's get to the exploding hiker. Unfortunately for me, there's no strategy in this fight. On my part, I just spam body slam and hope to get a paralysis, and that he'll be fully paralyzed or use any move that's not self-destruct. The first Geodude goes over quite well as it only uses a bunch of defense curls as I get through it. The second Geodude, however, will not have any of that. Right away it self-destructs and we must defeat the Graveler now. The Graveler then comes out and we get a really lucky early paralysis and so far it's cooperating. Then a few attacks later a crit saves the day and this run has gone from good to excellent. We're now working our way to Celadon and directly to the Mart to start to sell our excess items and pick up some useful items such as 3 Calcium and the TM for Reflect. Now's the time to head to Saffron to pick up our final move of the run in Psychic. With that done, our move set is finally complete and I make my way to Erika, not wasting any time with the extra trainers except for the mandatory one. Erika starts out with the Victory Bell, and we start to spam our Psychics to get through her team. Victory Bell wastes my time with a weak rap before going down. Tangela annoys me with a Constrict, resulting in a speed drop, 
and then of course goes down to the next attack. Vileplume never stood a chance as a psychic then takes it down. I'm not entirely sure if the crit mattered, but if she used anything other than sleep powder, it really wouldn't have mattered anyways. Next up, we fly to Lavender Town and head to Champ 4. I don't anticipate much of a challenge, but that's why we play out these runs. Pidgeotto comes out, and it's just one Thunderbolt to take care of it. Next is Gyarados, and it's again just a Thunderbolt. I really don't know the best choice to use on Growlithe, but for now, a Thunderbolt will do. For now, Kadabra is still being outsped and taken down by a Body Slam. Then, Ivysaur is last, and even though Psychic would have finished it off better, Body Slam still does the job. I think I was saving the Psychics to use on the Ghastlies during the tower. Or maybe I just forgot. With our new Poke Flute in hand, we head down to Fuchsia City to take a trip through the Safari Zone. As always, I make sure to grab the Carbos, Protein, and Surf along the way. Now's as good a time as any to implement my Creator Shoutout. Today's Creator Shoutout is Gaming with Foss. He attempts to beat all kinds of Pokemon games with different formats. He's a really interesting watch. Here's a short clip of his most recent video that I absolutely loved. After defeating a rival, I headed to the captain's corps to grab the HM for cut. I wonder what's caused the tension in this trash can there. Oh, you son of a bitch. After teaching Growlithe the TM for dig and capturing some Meowth, it's time to head into the next gym. You may be wondering why I'm entering Meowth here. Well, yes, I need them as an HM slave for cut, but they also have the ability to pick up. In Fire Red, the pickup ability has a 5% chance of finding PP ups, rare candies, and most importantly, the TM for hidden power. Now back to the run. This takes us to Koga. I think we're a bit underleveled. With our frail defenses, we're not going to survive as self-destruct no matter how much HP we have. The first coughing comes out, and we go first with our Psychic. As expected, the coughing goes down. Wait, what's this? Well, that just sucks. And the following sludge ensures we won't survive as self-destruct now. But I guess I should be thankful it wasn't a smokescreen. Muck survives the first Psychic and sets up an expected Minimize. But it doesn't do any good as our next Psychic takes it out. On the coughing, I take my first turn to set up a Reflect for the possible self-destruct from Weezing. Coughing uses Tackle, which I didn't even remember it had. We then get a critical hit Psychic and this brings us to Weezing. Our first Psychic manages to do a little more than half and the deciding moment is approaching. Well, he decided to use self-destruct. Yes, we survived thanks to a Reflect. It's now crunch time as we have our final moveset and everything we need to race through the gym leaders and get to the league. Next up is Champ 5. Pidgeot, as you once again would imagine, is an easy one-shot with Thunderbolt. Gyarados is four times weak to Thunderbolt and therefore a one-shot as well. Now between the two choices for Growlithe, I go with Thunderbolt because its defense and special are about the same. However, between the 85 power Body Slam and the 95 power Thunderbolt, it's a real no-brainer. But Thunderbolt actually has Stab, which is the same type attack bonus. Since Electabuzz is an electric type, it gets a 50% boost to its power, making it actually stronger than a random Pokemon using Thunder. Anyways, Growlithe goes down in one hit. Alakazam is next, and it manages to survive our Body Slam. We're to the point where the last two battles against this thing are going to be extremely difficult. But not this time, as it just uses Disable and goes down to our next Thunderbolt. Venusaur, despite the weakness, only takes half to a Psychic, but only uses the inferior Vine Whip. This was a rather painless Champ 5 battle for once, but not being able to one-shot the Alakazam will make the rest of the run very scary. Giovanni is anything but trivial, but only because of my mistakes. I'll let myself take over from here. Alright, we're just going for it. I saved in front of the rival anyways. Ow, that... Okay, I was supposed to psychic that. Okay. Okay, that was fine. I definitely think the using the super potion helped, but I don't think it ended up mattering in the end because we would have been at two. Next up, I fly directly to Saffron to get an attempt against Sabrina. I really could have done Blaine next if I wanted, but since I'll be using Body Slam against her Pokemon, the only thing that this would achieve is an extra level or two. Not before long, I finish the puzzle in her gym, which is just the top left, bottom left, bottom left. Kadabra is out first, and as I expected, it goes down to a single body slam. 
Mr. Mime is next and has defenses just as low as Kadabra, but ends up surviving a body slam. But thanks to our terrific special, we get through without taking too much damage. Venomoth is very similar to Mr. Mime except for its typing. I really don't know if the low defense and high attack, or if the high special defense and high special with same type attack bonus will be better, but I continue with body slam anyways. It ends up not doing very much and we work our way to the nasty Alakazam. Surprisingly, I outspeed it, and that really just means I only need to take one attack from it to win this one. Psybeam doesn't do as much as I'd expect, and we finish it off. Psybeam did 46 damage at 65 power, so Psychic at 90 probably wouldn't have done 100 damage without a crit. With speed in mind, I head directly to the Pokemon Mansion and pick up the Carbos along the way and the rare candies for the league. Unfortunately, in my haste, I missed one of the questions in Blaine's gym and I have to do an extra battle, but I do level up before Blaine, so it's not all bad. On to Blaine, the Growlithe comes out and Thunderbolt doesn't KO it in one hit. But thanks to his takedown, the Growlithe still goes down on the first turn, just not my turn. After the first attack from Growlithe, I don't take a risk and I set up Reflect on Ponyta next. He chooses to use a Growl, which will increase my Thunderbolt's power by an extra 12.5%. Thunderbolt gets a crit and will never know if it mattered. With Rapidash, I knew I wouldn't be able to take it out in one hit, so I went for the chance of paralysis on Body Slam. At the time, I probably forgot about the Growl and it didn't do very much. The Rapidash doesn't do much and I continue to ram myself head first with some more Body Slams. On to Arcanine and I did notice the extra Growl and changed my strategy back to Thunderbolt. A crit followed by a roar gets us past the Arcanine battle. We'll never know if the Fire Blast would have taken me out, but with the two Growl badge boosts, I don't think it would have. With Psychic and our high special, I don't anticipate Giovanni will be much of a challenge at this point. We may have lucked our way through some of the battles, but the moves we are using are very consistent and strong. I made a mistake against the two mandatory trainers and used four Psychics before the Giovanni battle. Going back to the Pokemon Center will be too slow, and without an Ether, I decide to just go for it and fingers crossed on this one. Rhyhorn is next and there's only one strategy here, Psychic and Hope. It's not a one shot and this is when the reality of the situation starts to creep in and I now know I need to rash my PP up to Rhydon. Doug Trio doesn't have a very high defense stat, but yet manages to survive a body slam. Thanks to a signature guard spec, we get past one of the biggest threats in Doug Trio, because the dig attack is something that we actually cannot deal with. Nitto Queen goes down to two psychics, Nitto King then goes down to two psychics. I'll let live Steve take it away from here on the reaction to the lack of psychics going into this battle. Interesting. Oh, this is bad. Oh my god. Oh no. I do need the PP up. Also, I'm not getting any crits. I give a 20% chance to crit. Okay. Okay, so I do need the PP up. Uh, or an Ether. After reviewing the footage, Rhydon only spammed Fissures the entire time. It wasn't until later that I realized that Giovanni is one of the few trainers to have good AI, and it will spam Fissure the entire time because Ground is two times effective against Electric. For those of you that do not know, Fissure is a one-hit KO move with a 30% accuracy, but that only happens if you outspeed, and it surely didn't outspeed me. After a quick heal, it's time to head champ. Oh boy, I am not looking forward to the Alakazam after seeing what Sabrina had done to me. Pidgeot unsurprisingly goes down to a single Thunderbolt. With Rhyhorn, I held Rapid Fire A just a little too long and went for Thunderbolt and took 24 damage in return. But thanks to a failed Tail Whip, that's all he gets done to me. Gyarados was never in question with a Thunderbolt. A few more levels since the last Growlithe we took down, we get the extra damage we need to take this one down with one Thunderbolt. The hardest two Pokemon are next and we get our Body Slam in, but even a critical hit doesn't manage to take it down. A Psychic goes off and 72 damage later we survive and get to finish it off. Venusaur will most likely survive a Psychic, so we'll just have to pray he doesn't use Razor Leaf. Our Psychic goes off and it does even less than half. Growth gives me the opportunity to attack again, but now we will for sure not be able to take it down this turn. Vine Whip goes off and it does only a measly 21 damage. The next Psychic gets us the victory, but fate was not in our hands that second to last turn. 
That's not good news in regards to the final battle. As we get through Victory Road and arrive at the Elite Four, I learned from the Kangaskhan run that if you go through the game and save all that time with minimum battles, you can respectively use all your rare candies at this point and don't honestly look too overleveled. I also get the choice to pass up on Light Screen, which is basically the special version of Reflect, unlike Barrier, which is a badge boosting move. I also get the chance of learning Thunder, but I don't really think the extra power is worth the accuracy trade-off. At the still relatively low level of 56, I entered the league and made my first attempt against Lorelei. Dugong is out and it manages to survive the first Thunderbolt. But thanks to a Gen 1 mechanic where the opponent selects its move after you use yours, she then uses a Super Potion. The next Thunderbolt then finishes her off. Cloyster is famous for one thing, defense. Thanks to the typing split for moves, all electric moves will be special in gens 1 through 3, so we get to take advantage of double damage on low special defense. Slowbro is next, and this one is one of those Pokemon that really made me wonder if I should be using Mimic instead of Reflect. But I won't need the boost since Electabuzz is actually good at special attacks, unlike my last Kangaskhan run. Jinx is next, and I don't really have any options for this Pokemon, except Body Slam. I have no choice but to use Body Slam and take a chance at her using Ice Punch and freezing me. But she just uses Double Slap and we get through to the extremely tanky Lapras. But Lapras doesn't get a turn as we get a critical hit. Just like Kangaskhan, I go straight to the Black Belt without healing or restoring my PP. But I didn't use any Psychic, so I'm not worried at this point. Without further ado, Onyx comes out and we use Psychic. Hitmonchan comes out and we use Psychic. Hitmonlee comes out and we use Psychic. Onyx comes out and guess what? We use Psychic. Machamp comes out and we use Psychic. Oh Black Belt, you ruined my sweep. Machamp then doesn't know its own speed and tries for a fissure and of course doesn't hit, which leads us to our victory with another Psychic. With Agatha, I'm quite optimistic. We don't have Dig, but we do have Psychic. We don't get a chance to take advantage of her low defense stat, but a weakness is still always good to exploit. It's nice to have a Pokemon that's very fast, so we get an opportunity to one-shot or two-shot every Pokemon before getting hit with her trolley moves. Gengar comes out, and our first Psychic does more than half. She hits us with a Hypnosis, and this has gotten bad. We luckily wake up the next turn, but take a Nightshade for one third of our HP. Our next Psychic takes care of Gengar, which takes us to Golbat. Did anyone else grow up calling it Goldbat? There's no way I could have been the only one. Haunter isn't exactly a one-hit KO either. But thanks to a Dream Eater, bye bye Haunter. I've watched a lot of Gen 1 runs. Of any of the Pokemon on Agatha's team, does anything struggle with Arbok the most? Next up is the strongest Gengar, but if you take a look at this moveset, outside of Confuse Ray followed by some Nightshades, this is going to go pretty well for us. Unfortunately for Agatha, our first Psychic puts it in Super Potion range, and the last Gengar doesn't even get a chance to make a move. We're fast approaching the trainer in which we taught Reflect for. As much as it helped against Koga, it was for all the Hyper Beams that Lance's dragons use. I don't expect to one-shot anything except for the Gyarados. Without an Ice move, we have a chance of taking a Hyper Beam from every Pokemon on his team. For the next battle, I'll let past Steve take over. My excitement is too good not to share and keep it going through to the champion. Alright, this is it. This is the hardest battle of the game. Next to maybe the rival. No, no, this is the hardest battle of the game. Alright, this is it right here. Reflect. Alright. Thunderbolt. Not a two shot. Hyper Potion. Ooh, crit though. Okay, not bad. Hyper Beam, thanks to our Reflect. Didn't do a whole lot. Sweet. Uh, part Flying type. Sweet. Barrier. Doesn't help. Dude! Dude! Oh my god! Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm doing it! Zero resets! <sighs> alright, right, right. That, that was expected. Body, this is the hard part. Side beam. Crit. Mm, that's bad.
Oh, I was supposed to use Psychic there. Mm. Now the world may never know because of me. A momentary lapse in judgment causes me to lose focus and hold A just a little too long going into Gyarados. Do I think the mistake caused me to lose when I should have won? Not really. I do think that Arcanine or Venusaur would have taken me out with such low HP, but now we'll never know if he decided to use moves like Roar and Solar Beam. In the following attempt, Pidgeot goes down to a single Thunderbolt. Alakazam comes out and Body Slam paralyzes it, and then the deciding moment comes up. Fully paralyzed, and we get through Alakazam unscathed. On Rhydon, I get Reflect Off first, and then follow up with a Psychic. This time, we get through Rhydon with two Psychics. Must have been a range. Gyarados is next, and I remember Thunderbolt this time. Arcanine follows, and the next Thunderbolt manages to do a bit more than half. Arcanine then uses Leer, which would have been really good for me if he had used that on the last run. Venusaur is next, and we get a Psychic that does a little more than half. The big moment is incoming, and with HP this high, it's certainly won, right? Growth. Well, it's over, because of a special drop last attack. We finished the game at level 61, with 104 real time, 416 game time, and 1 reset. Surprisingly enough, this was only my second attempt, and I really didn't see a need for a third or a fourth. My first attempt I finished at level 57, with 138 real time, 528 game time, and 20 resets. Now my plan going into this run was to use the level information I learned from the first run, and test it for consistency. But, when I made it to the league with zero resets and such a fast time, I decided to screw it and just use all my rare candies and end a bit higher than the first attempt. Before we get to the ranking, I actually want to point something out. This run looked easy, and it was, but for my first run, and two unfinished runs, that this Pokemon is deceptively good. There's actually a lot of stall points you didn't see in this run because I got some godly luck to get by them all. The Exploding Hiker, Koga, Champ 5, Champ 6, Lance, and the Champion are all basically battles where it could stall. But Self Destruct, Psychic, and Hyper Beam are just so strong against us that we need to rely on luck to get by these battles. So, despite an S tier time, I'm going to stick it at the top of the A tier. Do not get me wrong, Electabuzz is amazing, and its moveset is quite diverse, and the stats are very good. But the defense is really its shortcoming, and its HP is nothing to run home about either. It's much better than the likes of Beedrill or Butterfree, but certainly not as good as Alakazam or Kangaskhan. Thanks to the comments from all the previous videos, I have chosen to do Venomoth next. This one had the most comments overall, but I have decided a special HM only video will be in the works first. So the Pokemon after Venomoth will have an extra week or two before being selected. If you have any suggestions for Pokemon, ways to improve my strategy, maybe even a way to improve the quality of my videos, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. My channel is always improving, and every video I plan to bring even better content. Keep the suggestions coming and look forward to bringing you another video. Now it's time to see what I learned. First things first, and I attempt Brock at level 13, and the attempt went probably as well as you'd expect. I got through Geodude with Quick Attack, and then Onyx hit me with too many Screech Attacks, in which even Tackle could take me out. I tried again at 14, and I got further into the battle, bringing Onyx down to just a sliver. At this point, I decided that it was possible at 14, but probably consistent at 15. Champ 2 and Misty were both first try victories, so nothing to learn here. Champ 3 and Surge were also first try victories, so nothing to learn there. Now, when it comes to the Exploding Hiker, I gave it two tries with Mega Punch, because I didn't save Body Slams for this battle. I then headed back for more PP, and worked my way back for another brush with the Master of Self-Destruct. With Body Slam, I got a first try victory, followed with the second attempt being a first try victory, which gave me a false sense of Lance being the most difficult battle in the run. The Exploding Hiker is by far the most difficult. Each Pokemon takes at least 4 hits, and that's about the chance they use Self-Destruct. I can only survive one, so the odds are against me. Erica and Champ 4 were also both first try victories, so nothing to learn there either. With Koga, I was able to make it to the Weezing without taking a single point of damage, and the self-destruct took us down to 1 HP. I knew this wasn't a viable strategy in the future, so this is when I wish I could say that I learned the reflex strategy here, but that doesn't come till later. Champ 5 was a first try victory, but I should also note that on this attempt, Alakazam was paralyzed on its first attack, 
and surprise surprise it was fully paralyzed, and I didn't think about how much of a threat it actually was. Surprisingly, the battle against Giovanni didn't go very well, but that's because I ran out of psychics before being able to finish off the Nitto Queen, so I didn't think that would happen again. Sabrina and Blaine were both first try victories, so there's nothing to learn there. Giovanni and Champ 6 were both first try victories, so also nothing to learn there. With only 5 resets to this point, Electabuzz is having a truly exceptional first run for me. I like to go into my first run very underleveled, so I can learn where I need to be and what training I may need to do to get to these points. My first Lorelei attempt is at level 47, and I played the attempt very poorly and still win. That was enough for me to deem that I could get past her at any level. The Black Belt attempt is at level 48 and wasn't any issue in any way. I do get the chance to learn Light Screen, and I had to Google it to see if it was a badge boosting move like Barrier. It ended up being the special version of Reflect, and I move on. My first attempt was against Agatha at level 49, and honestly, it could have gone better. I spam Psychic, even against the Golbat, but a mixture of sleep and confusion does me in. I then succeed the next attempt at level 49, but then wanted to see what level would get the second Gengar to a 2 hit KO. I then reset 5 times just to find out that number was approximately level 55. My first attempt at level 54 makes it to Dragonite but it then takes me out. I then try to mimic agility on the next attempt to see if I can get Thunderbolt to a 2 hit KO on the Dragonairs or Dragonite. After 2 failed attempts to get agility strategy working because of level ups, a member of my Twitch chat recommended I use Reflect. On my very next attempt at level 54, I won so much easier and more consistently. I was winning with the previous mimic agility strategy, but that was honestly not great because at any point I could take a massive hyper beam from any member of his team. I then spent another 2 attempts at level 57 and 60 to see if I could get a 2 shot on the Dragonairs and they didn't work. I then try to mimic the hyper beam and it doesn't one shot the Dragonairs either. After a few more attempts, I confirm reflect is the best strategy and body slam is the best for the Dragonairs, which I didn't remember in the second attempt. The champion is a first try victory, and therefore I didn't try anything else. At no point did Alakazam end up being a problem, and I just didn't recognize it as a problem it was until the second attempt. Well, that's it for the What I Learned section today. Please let me know if you like this quick What I Learned section. I'm going to switch the format a bit for my future videos. I want the first run to be an authentic run, in which I try my best to get the victory and then you get to see my struggles. Then the second attempt, I will do all my playtesting just like Scott's thoughts, and then a third or fourth attempt will be to improve my overall time. I like this format a bit more, and you'll understand why I made certain mistakes at the same time I did. I feel like in this way, I'll be able to highlight my original strategy, and then you'll be able to see a new strategy that develops after knowing how the run will play out. Thanks everybody, and hopefully I'll see you in two weeks with my Pokemon Blue HM only run.